Looking to take your iPhone videography skills to the next level? Then you definitely want to check out this app called Filmic Pro, available for the iPhone and iPad. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Filmic Pro is by far my favorite video app for the iPhone. It has so many features like separate exposure and focus reticles. There's also the action slider in the upper left hand corner that reveals a host of additional features such as the rule of thirds overlay, uh, audio gain controls, flash uh, controls, just to name a few, zoom controls, lots of stuff there in the action slider uh, and you can quickly hide that away just by tapping the little arrow. And there's also the settings little gear down here and the settings gear reveals a whole host of additional features. Folks, this app seriously is extremely deep. In fact, it has a manual that's I believe almost 50 pages long if you wanna go and go through all that. But the point of this video is to show you several of the features from Filmic Pro that make it such a compelling package and more importantly, why it's a better choice for videographers than the stock camera app. It really is just a no brainer when you start to see all the things that this app has to offer. So why not just get right into it and show you some of my favorite features from Filmic Pro. Let's have a look. Separate focus and exposure reticles. The nice thing about Filmic Pro is that you get separate focus and exposure reticles right there on the interface. You can slide them around and adjust them. And for instance, you can focus here in the background. So I'm just put my uh, focus reticle there on the object, which is the Apple Watch in the background there. And it will focus on the background. And I can move it into the foreground and focus on an object in the foreground, which is the duck, of course. And I can just move like that and focus just like that. And I can even, if I want to, lock the focus or lock the exposure independently of one another. Just tap on that and it'll turn red to lock either item, the uh, focus or exposure control. Um, and you can move the exposure around like that to gain a different exposure and make sure you have the right exposure set for your image. You can, of course, tap on that exposure as well to lock that just like that. Now, uh, there are other ways to lock the exposure just by using the little buttons in the bottom left hand corner. So I'm gonna unlock these two here, but notice the little buttons in the bottom left hand corner. You can tap on those and lock the exposure or the focus as well. Focus slider. You can also adjust the focus by activating the focus slider. Just tap and hold on the focus reticle like that. And then you'll see the focus slider appear on the left side of the interface. So you can use this little reticle and then just slide it up like that to adjust the focus or slide it down to adjust the focus, just like that. Pretty cool. So that gives you fine grain control over the focus just by sliding your finger. But it goes deeper than that. Move the pull point, which is the horizontal line, and then tap the point, and then you can smoothly transition and focus on an area that you designate just like that. So you can perform essentially a rack focus using this tool by transitioning between the two pull points that you move strategically on the slider. Variable speed slider. So once you establish the pull points on your focus slider, you can go in and actually change the velocity or the speed at which the slider moves. So you can just swipe over from the slider just like that and adjust this little variable speed slider button that allows you to as you can see, adjust the speed of the transition between the two pull points for some really, really smooth transitions. Obviously that's a little slow, but of course you can move it closer to the top to adjust the speed and make it go faster. Just like that. Adjust white balance and tint. You can lock the white balance by tapping the white balance button in the bottom left hand corner, but if you tap and hold on it, you reveal the manual controls and you can adjust the color temperature in Kelvin. As you see there, there's also a variable speed slider. You can adjust between two pull points. It works very much like the focus slider. There's also a tint button. If you tap tint here, you can adjust the tint, which will give you sort of almost like an Instagram like filter. Uh, you can adjust the tint like that. You can use pull points on those as well, just like that to adjust the tint. So pretty cool. Also variable speed slider. You'll notice that's a trend with a lot of these manual controls. There's tons of fine grain control within the Filmic Pro interface. 4K at 100 megabits per second. It's possible to have a much higher bit rate when shooting video with Filmic Pro when compared to the stock camera app. Just tap the settings gear and then tap resolution if I can get it to work, there we go. So now you can set the resolution, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna set it up to 4K 2160p and now you can adjust the bit rate. You see it goes to 75, but you can pull it all the way up to 100 megabits per second. Now with the stock camera app, I believe 4K maxes out at around 50 megabits per second. Now 
Just because you set a high bit rate in Filmic Pro doesn't mean it's gonna look way better when you shoot videos in Filmic Pro versus the stock camera app. A lot of variables are involved in image fidelity, but having a higher bit rate certainly can't hurt in most cases. And Filmic Pro lets you set a higher bit rate pretty much across the board on all resolutions when compared to the stock camera app. So that's something you definitely wanna look into taking advantage of if you're serious about video. One more thing I wanna mention though is that if you export to your camera roll or if you export from the share sheet, it's automatically gonna compress your video. So make sure you use iTunes file sharing when exporting or when saving videos to your computer. That way you get the full resolution and don't get some compressed uh, version of that video that you shot. So just keep that in mind. Very important to remember that little tip. Setting frame rate. With Filmic Pro, you get a lot more frame rate options than you do with the stock camera app. For instance, by default, Filmic Pro sets your frame rate at 24 frames per second, which is more of a cinematic frame rate that's used with movies and things of that nature. Uh, but as you can see here, lots of frame rate options. Obviously, this is going to get less and less as you go up the resolution scale, but if you set yourself to 720p, uh, you get pretty much across the board all those frame rate options available to you. If you set to 1080p, you get most of them like you see here. And if you set to 4K, your options lessen even more, but still it's gonna be better than what you get with the stock camera app. So if you're really serious about shooting uh, cinematic looking video productions, then obviously having 24 frames per second is a no brainer and Filmic Pro allows you to do that. Changing the aspect ratio. Speaking of cinematic look and feel, you can tap the settings gear and tap resolution, and then you'll see all these options for changing the aspect ratio. So you can change it to a one-to-one -one ratio for like Vine videos and things like that. The really cool thing about this is that you can actually use exposure outside of the ratio and uh, still use that exposure or focus for that matter outside of the ratio, but what's actually inside the little red square, in this example at least, will be the only thing captured on video. And of course, there are many more ratios to choose from if you're looking for something a little more on the cinematic side. So let's go back into the uh, settings here and check out the additional ratios. Let's tap the settings gear, and for example, I can tap the 2.39 to one ratio for that widescreen look. Digital zoom controls. You can access digital zoom by tapping the action slider and then tapping the little zoom button in the upper right hand corner. By tapping the plus button, you can zoom in like this. And by tapping the minus button, you can zoom out like this. Now as you're zooming, you're gonna notice a little color bar indicator that basically lets you know when you've zoomed in too far because digital zoom is not optical zoom, so it does result in image degradation. Uh, if you zoom in just a little, the degradation shouldn't be too, too noticeable, but as you can see here, you get the little red bar indicating that you zoomed in a little too far, which may result in artifacts in your video, and that's obviously not desirable. You can use digital zoom, but you have to use it sparingly. Sometimes you may wanna use it for creative reasons, but just use it sparingly. Now you can also use these zoom targets by tapping these little buttons right when you're at a specific uh, zoom level that you wish to be at. If I can get it working, hopefully. My target points aren't very good. There we go. All right, so you can set these zoom targets to actually jump between, or should I say zoom between, the zoom levels that you set. So right here is the least zoom, then I have it zoom in a little bit more, then a little bit more here, and I can quickly access those zoom levels just by tapping the targets like that. And I can get rid of them just by tapping and holding if I wish to. Now you can also change the speed of the zoom by tapping and holding the zoom button in the action slider, and then using the little slider here to change the speed speed of the zoom. So notice how much faster the zoom is now. And of course I can make it slower by simply pulling down the zoom slider. Adjusting shutter speed. You can adjust this shutter speed by accessing the manual controls for ISO. So just tap and hold on ISO. And then you'll see the shutter speed button in the middle here. Just tap that. And now you can adjust this shutter speed manually. Now, as a rule, you generally want to keep your shutter speed double the frame rate. So if I'm shooting 24 frames a second, I want to change my shutter speed to 48. And you can adjust that however you wish, though. For creative reasons, you may want to change it to a different level. Depends on your preferences. Adjusting flash intensity. Filmic Pro includes a really neat feature found in the action slider, the LED flash. Now, obviously a flash is a flash, no big deal, right? But if you tap and hold on the LED flash button, you're gonna reveal the flash slider. And that allows you to actually slide down and adjust the flash to one of four different levels. So the bottom level obviously is the lowest, then you go up, 
the flash gets brighter. So if you're shooting a subject that doesn't require too much light, just slide it down to the bottom. If you're shooting a subject that requires more light, then slide it up to the top, just like this. Pausing and resuming recordings. One of the major downsides to the stock camera app, at least for me, is that you can't pause and resume recordings. But with Filmic Pro, if you go into the settings gear and you tap, well, let's try it again. If you go into the settings gear and you tap device, you're gonna see this option to stitch together footage. So stitch recorded footage, just enable that little switch. Once you do that, you're gonna notice that the little record button changes. It's gonna have a little arrow on it. And when you tap it, you'll see that changes into a pause button. And that basically allows you to pause in progress footage and then pick up right where you left off. Basically, you can perform a jump cut without actually having to shoot multiple videos. It's all in the same video because it's stitched together automatically. So now once I've recomposed my shot, I just press the record button again to pick up right where I left off. And once you're truly finished recording a video, all you need to do is tap and hold on the record button and that will actually stop the in progress recording. And now we can go and let's look at it. Let's have a look and see this jump cut, see if you can recognize it here. So it's playing. And this is all the same video. And there we go. So you can see the jump cut, the focus changed, the exposure changed, etc. So that is how you stitch together recordings using Filmic Pro. Audio meters. It may sound extremely simple, but it really helps out when you can monitor your audio. For instance, if I yell, hey! Hey, you can see the audio meters rise. This helps you to ensure that your audio isn't too loud or too soft. Advanced audio settings. Speaking of audio, Filmic Pro in its preferences contains quite a few advanced audio settings to choose from. In fact, you can actually determine which internal microphone on your iPhone will be used to record audio. You can choose between the front, the back, and the bottom microphone, that's crazy. You can also choose the type of codec that will be used for audio, so if you want lossless audio, you can do that. You can also choose your sample rate. It even goes up to 96 kilohertz if you have an external microphone that supports that. And also, you have the option of choosing to only record the video and omit the sound altogether. Hiding the interface. Filmic Pro includes the ability to hide the heads up display or all the on screen elements within the interface while recording video, which is really nice because what this means is that when you go into settings device and turn on tap to hide interface and hide reticles with interface, you can just tap on the screen like this and it only displays what's in frame, no other on-screen display elements are shown. That's nice if you're using an external recorder with something like an HDMI output on your iPhone so you can view the full frame on your external recorder without any on-screen elements. Saving presets. For an app this incredibly deep, it's important to be able to save presets and quickly recall presets easily, and you can do so directly from the settings in Filmic Pro. You can easily load and save presets, and you can reset to default settings with little effort. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been my look at Filmic Pro. If you're interested in improving your video workflow, if you're interested in truly using and harnessing the power of your iPhone to make some truly incredible videos, then Filmic Pro should be in your repertoire. It is such a deep app. I really just touched on the surface of some of the functionality. There's more to talk about. Maybe I'll do so in an upcoming video, but for now, you should check this out if you're at all serious about making good videos, high quality videos. The stock camera app is good, but this is gonna help you take it to the next level with advanced functionality. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.